Hello and welcome to the distribution team demo. It's June 15th in the APAC region and I'm Vishal Patel. Uh, I'm the quality counterpart for the distribution team and today we'll be doing a demo on LO report. Uh, and we'll also be touching a bit on the QA pipelines that run in the Omnibus uh, project. Uh, so let's start the demo. Uh, I'll start by sharing the screen. Uh, Cool. So when I'll be talking about the Alu report, I'll be mainly focusing around the Alu report comment that's being generated in the MR. So whenever a developer creates an MR, there will be a comment which will be generated through the various processes uh, when the pipeline is started. So there'll be just one comment for the testing that will be generated. So if we look at the Omnibus GitLab uh, project and if you create an MR, there'll be a pipeline which looks like so. Uh, there are two manual jobs called trigger CE package and trigger EE package, uh, which you need to kick off. Once you kick off either of these packages, depending on which package you want to test, you'll be kicking off those uh, jobs. And once you kick off those jobs, it will be triggering the child pipeline. So let's go into one of the pipeline and see what it has so it has multiple things but the one that's uh, important for uh, this demo is the qa test once the prerequisites are done the child pipeline will be kicking off a job called qa test which will be creating another child pipeline for testing purposes and if we go into that child pipeline you can see there are multiple tests which are being run right so these are all the tests that are run on that specific uh, MR. Once all these tests are run, there will, there will be an end-to-end -end test report job which will be running. And this is the job which does all the collating of all the reports, combines it into one report and uh, uploads it to an S3 bucket. And it also posts a comment in the MR. So you can see this adding reports URL and this updating, right? That's what says that a comment has been posted into the MR. So if we take a look at the comment, uh, yeah, this is what you'll be seeing once you run that, either the trigger EE package or the trigger CE package job. Um, this will basically show you all the test failures. It's it's showing you by groups, where the failures in each group, it will show you, show you all the past, failed, any skipped tests, any flaky, and the total number of tests that have run. You can access the report by clicking here. And this is the commit ID that the test has ran on. So let's look at the report, right? So this is the report. Uh, let me look at the, yeah. I'll, I'll show you a more comprehensive uh, comment. So this is a more example of a comprehensive comment, right? Which will I've, I've run a, a CE uh, trigger job and an EE trigger job. And if you run both, this is how the comment will look, look like. Just ignore these replies because we won't be having these in the newer version of the report comment. Uh, this was the previous one. So just ignore this. But this is what uh, will the report will look like if you run both the jobs, right? And if you go to one of the report, this is what it looks like, the LU report. It will show you all the failures, how many percentage of the tests have passed, the total number of test cases. It shows you a historic trend of the test depending on the pipeline. This is the pipeline number and the previous pipeline that you've run. So you can also go to your previous pipeline and see the report over there as well. So this is your previous historic pipeline. Uh, there are the, the failures are classified under two categories, the product defects and the test defects. The product defects are basically any failures which have anything to do with a test which is expecting something. So if you encounter any expect failures in the test, it will be lined up over here. It will be categorized that as a product defect. And if there are any other generic defects like environment failures or 404 or 502 or any of such failures, there'll be under the test defects. So if you go under one of the product defects, like see, you can see uh, it's expecting certain things 
to be true, but it got false. So you can see all the failures over here, right? How many failures, all the test failures combined. You don't have to go into each and every job to look at all these failures. So if you take one of the failure over here, you can see screenshots attached, you can see logs attached, and you can see it like two uh, iteration, iterations of it because this test retried twice. And that's why you have like two screenshots and two HTML and two browser logs. So this is something will, that will be useful if you want to debug the test, right? And if you want to go into more details about why the test failed, uh, which is definitely helpful. But if you just want to look at if this failure is, is related to your MR or not, you can click on failure issues. So this takes you to an existing failure issue if there was one, right? And then you can, th there might be multiple failure issues as well, uh, depending on the, the stack trace that we might have, right? So you'll just have to go into a couple and then a couple of ones which are opened and then look at the failure. And if it's similar to what you, you have been encountering, it might be an existing failure. So essentially this, you know, might make you a bit independent in terms of uh, figuring out if the failure is related to your MR or not, right? And if there are any uh, confusions around that, you can obviously contact the quality team, me or Nylia, anyone, well, either of one might be able to help you on that, right? So this has links to failure issues, which is one important thing that might be useful to the distribution group. Uh, there's another test cases. This may not be that much useful to you, but it's just something to know about. So it's each test is linked to a test case and you can see the history of each test case, whether it has passed or failed and any comments that we as quality people do analysis on. So you might find any comments over here on why it's failing or uh, if it's a flaky test or any other discussions around the test, right? So that's another useful link. Uh, moving down, uh, we have histories. You can see the history of the test as well, like what the success rate was. Is there any failures? You can see retries. So that's another useful stuff. If you go to the overview, you'll be able to see which version of GitLab the test ran on, the revision, and the CAS version as well. If you go, if you want to go directly to the pipeline, you can click over here as well and go to the pipeline as well directly, right? And this would take you to the test pipeline that was running earlier. And this is a historic trend that we've already looked at. So I think those are pretty much the main things that the distribution team might be needing. Uh, there are other things as well in the suite, but I think we can skip that as of now. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to show was around the uh, history, I guess. Now this is all done. So going back to the pipeline, we had a question from one of the team member in one of our weekly meeting where there are some jobs which show like the same name, but repeated multiple times. Like say, for example, the instance job or the package job or the prefect job. So just to make it clear that these jobs aren't the same jobs running again and again. Um, these, the instance, for example, is running a test instance all scenario in our uh, test suite, right? What that scenario does is that it runs the entire suite. And the way it's programmed is that uh, the entire suite runs in parallel. And that's why you will be able to see the five uh, sub jobs, if I may say, within the instance job. Uh, it's not a repetition, but if you go ahead and compare the tests, you know, they'll each be individual tests and they, they basically show you that, you know, that these are all the tests that are running and they should all pass. So in case if there are any failures, you can probably retry, but don't, there shouldn't be any assumptions that, you know, it's, it's a job, which is, it's, it's the same job, which is running again and again. The same thing is for any of the other sub jobs as well. Like this is running uh, tests in parallel as well. There are different tests which are running different tests in parallel. So that's 
uh, the the QA side of things. Um, yeah, and going back to the report, we have some. This is the latest Alu report that you'll be seeing, right? We have some improvements that are still happening in this report. Uh, currently, if you see, there is a failure in the test, but the pipeline is still passed. Right, the pipeline is still passed, but the tip, the failure, the uh, the test have still failed. So there are some improvements that we are still uh, will be doing, and it's under discussion how to tackle such kind of things or bring it to notice to developers uh, that the test has failed, and you need to resolve it or at least see that you know it's not related to your MR before you go ahead and progress with uh, the merging of this MR. A small thing uh, that I wanted to also show is that the when we go to the pipeline, we go to one of the pipeline. This might not be helpful directly to the distribution team, but it's just for the quality folks. So uh, the distribution Omnibus GitLab uh, pipeline, it makes use of uh, the GitLab project as well. So it's recalling the QA test job in the GitLab project, right? And what the QA test job does essentially is it's it calls the uh, a pipeline common project, uh, which is basically a collection of the common things that the test uh, will be using. And one of it is the Allure uh, report uploader gem. Uh, and that's a gem which has been specifically designed for uh, GitLab. It also works for GitHub, but it, in the backend, it uses Allure Reports CLI. Uh, what it does is that it collates each of these tests that generate a report individually. And what this gem does is that it collates all that, all those reports. It makes it into one, one report and it uploads it to an S3 bucket, which is acting as a static host and you can access that as directly using a link. The gem also, once it has created the report, it also does, uh, it posts a comment in the MR and that's what we've seen over here, right? Regarding how it posts an MR, if you go to the code, so if you go to the Omnibus GitLab repository, GitLab CI config on gitlab.com, if you search for QA, test to make the QA test job post a report in the MR. These are the two environment variables that we had to pass. Uh, the first one is the auth token, which will be used by the danger bot to give it access to post a comment on the MR in that project, basically. And the second one is the merge request IID. If you've noticed in the pipeline, when we run the pipeline, there are multiple child pipelines that are created. There is one QA test. There is one for trigger e packages. So we are passing the merge request ID of the parent pipeline so that the gem, the Allure report publisher gem might come to know in which pipeline it's supposed to post a comment. So this is as the ID of the merge request that we are passing to the QA job. And as long as we pass these two things, the, the report should be posting the comment in the MR itself, right? So yeah, that was a pretty generic uh, overview of the QA pipeline and the Allure report. Um, we might go through the questions that you may ha have regarding this in the distribution weekly team meeting next week. So feel free to have post any questions in that meeting or even on Slack direct to, di directly to me, right? And I'll be more than happy to answer those questions, yeah. Uh, thanks, thanks for attending this demo uh, and I'll see you in the weekly meeting.